Hi everyone and thank you for attending this presentation which is called GRU ODE Bayes Continuous Modeling of Sporadically Observed Time Series and this is a joint work with Yaxim, Adam Arani and Yves Moreau, uh, everyone from K11. Uh, so first of all, what do we mean by sporadic time series? So we hear by that like multivariate time series with an irregular sampling both in time and across dimensions. And those type of time series are ubiquitous in electronic health records or EHR data. Uh, so as a representation here on this slide, we show, for instance, an example of uh, data from a patient I, for which we would observe over time different uh, features, here five, with the different colors. And you see that the sampling of the different features as um, a sampling time difference, which is varying over time, and also across dimensions, as not all uh, uh, measurements are observed at each uh, sampling time. And this data generates uh, suggests that there is like some underlying unobserved and probably continuous process that generates them, but we only sample them at very specific time, which is in the case of healthcare, which might be uh, doctor visits, for instance. The issue is that most machine learning methods assume a constant sampling. We're going to propose here an approach to try to deal with this type of time series uh, in a continuous fashion. Our work relies on the seminal ID of neural ODEs, which stands for Neural Ordinary Differential Equations, which considers ODEs parameterized by neural networks and allowing them then for more complex dynamics. First motivated by realizing that residual networks equations can be written as a difference equation and thus this ability to convert it to a continuous counterpart, this ID found applications in normalizing flows and time series models, among others. In their paper, the neural OD authors propose an architecture for forecasting and classification of sporadic time series, which consists of a time series autoencoder. However, this architecture requires a classical RNN to process the sporadic data in the encoder. Furthermore, the autoencoder architecture is not really suited for forecasting, as it embeds the whole time series in a single vector. In our work, we propose a more natural way to handle the sporadic time series input. Following the same line of reasoning, we propose GRU ODE, a neural ODE motivated by the equations of the GRU cell. We write the equation of the GRU cell as a difference equation, and then derive the corresponding continuous time ODE. This ODE enjoyed nice theoretical properties, such as boundedness between minus 1 and 1, and is numerically stable. Importantly, it is Lipschitz continuous with a constant of 2. So how do we actually deal with sporadic time series? Our approach works similarly to RNN with a hidden process, condition on which the observations are generated. So you have here like the probability of X depends with some mapping um, on the uh, continuous process H of T. The novelty compared to a standard RNN is that the hidden process is continuous and that will allow it to vary between observations. And it will vary according to an RDE, which is obviously a GRU RDE as uh, we just described. And similarly to an RNN, when you reach an observation, we update the hidden and we here allow that discrete jumps. To do this, we are going to use a standard GRU that we call GRU Bayes for a reason that will become clear later. We use a GRU cell here because it will operate in a minus one to one region, and just like the GRU ODE, so that we can actually reach any point in the latent space in a single update. Another way to see this is that initially the network thinks that you are following a particular trajectory, for instance, here and in the latent space, and as information arrives by packets, because it's in a sporadic fashion, so each uh, uh, piece of information comes in a new sample, you allow your model to change opinion and to choose another trajectory in the latent space for the future, like this discrete update uh, here. And also don't forget that the hidden process encodes the distribution of the data P of X. And as the method is a filtering technique, you predict the future condition in the past, you expect to have some reduction of uncertainty when you reach an observation. So actually, like as time goes by, like your uncertainty should grow, and then when you see an observation, you should actually like some shrinkage of the uncertainty. All in all, the model GRUOD Bayes consists of two modules, GRUOD for in-between samples update of the latent process, and GRU Bayes for the discrete update when an observation is reached. So, for a particular time series, the algorithm would go as follows. You first initialize your initial hidden state with some static variable or information you have about your time series. 
and then you use yeah whatever mapping in order to get your first uh, initial H0. And then you start integrating the GRU ODE from this H0 until you reach an observation. So for instance here, until uh, TK. At which point you would feed the observation and the current hidden state, so H of TK, to GRU Bayes to update the state. And then you continue with GRU ODE until the next observation and so on and so forth until you process all of your sporadic informations. You can do predictions about the future, so forecasting for your time series by keeping integrating the time series with GRU ODE until uh, whenever you want. For the training of this model, we introduce two different losses. So one will be loss free and loss lost. Loss free that will force GRU ODE to learn the correct dynamics. So it's basically the negative log likelihood of the observation from the value of the hidden when you reach the observation. And the second one is loss bost, which will force GRU Bayes to perform a Bayesian update. And this is expressed as the KL divergence between the achieved posterior distribution and the Bayesian posterior if you would consider a Gaussian observation error. Other observation error distributions are also possible. So let's now show some examples of train models uh, on a two-dimensional uh, correlated orchstein ullenbeck process. So we have here actually two uh, dimensions, a blue one and a green one. And this orchstein uh, ullenbeck will have uh, random uh, targets um, and the Brownian motions in both of the process are actually correlated. Here the dots uh, represent the available points while the solid lines are the means of the predictions of the model and the shaded areas represent the standard deviations of the prediction. So initially you see that with no observations, the uncertainties are getting pretty large pretty fast. And actually, because there is no information at all on which to condition on, uh, it models the distribution of the whole data set. We also observe this collapse of the uncertainty each time we observe a new point. So here, like as was explained before, and we can also observe that the model is picking correlations between both dimensions, as shown here with the red arrows. Uh, you can see that every time that you reach an observation, even if you don't observe an observation in the other dimension, there is still an update going on because the model is capable of picking up the correlation between the two different dimensions of the time series. We also report the results of our model on a real-world data set, so for patient trajectories. Uh, and this consists of the MIMIC-3 data set uh, for which we selected 20,000 ICU patients uh, for which we recorded 96 features over 40 hours follow-up and we considered two different tasks. The first task was in-hospital mortality prediction. So basically based on uh, those 42, 48 hours follow-up trying to predict if that patient would uh, uh, die in the ICU or would be able uh, to survive. And the other one uh, would be the vitals forecasting. So basically we would um, use 36 uh, hours uh, training data and try to predict what would happen after 36 hours for different vitals uh, of this uh, patients. And as you can see, uh, the GRU ODE outperforms the baseline the forecasting task and compares uh, very favorably in the classification task. Another important setup that we considered is the rare disease setup, and another way you will see that actually the GRU or the module is uh, important in uh, this uh, case. So we use the same data set, but instead of 20,000 ICU patients, we only reduce 2,000 ICU patients. And the task here is to forecast different vitals after 36 hours. And what we did is we did with ablation study. Uh, where we removed the GRU ODE was actually a GRU discretized. So basically GRU discretized is uh, the same model but with the GRU uh, ODE module uh, removed. And then we used a broad range of irregular regularization hyperparameters. And what we observed is that like despite like this very broad range of regularization hyperparameters, the GRU ODE Bayes was still performing uh, better than the GRU discretized. And we posit that this strong advantage is given by this continuity prior, which is embedded directly in the uh, ordinary differential equation. And that makes it uh, actually very uh, competitive in low sample setting when the continuity assumption is met. So to wrap up this presentation, what you have to take home is that we developed a continuous time recurrent network architecture for sporadic time series that this architecture embeds a continuity prior um, in itself. It's very good at forecasting and it provides a competitive advantage in low number of sample ratio. 
Thank you very much for your attention and I would be very uh, happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.